You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Get ready to find hope. Get ready to be inspired. Get ready to discover your full potential. Get ready for total success. From the Total Success Coach, Princess Bola Adelani. Hi, this is Princess Bola Adilani, the Total Success Coach, welcoming you to Inspired Success, your monthly dose of inspiration power, the program that equips you with the power and inspiration for total success. That is success at work and in life. Whoo, wow, it's December 2010. Can you believe it? <laughs> This year has literally come to an end. 2010 is over. It's the holiday season. It's the Christmas season. It's the season to give. And I know for many people, you know, presents and giving and sharing and parties is what is on your mind. But you know what I always tell you? You must always take time to reflect. You must take time out to reflect and to plan. To fail to plan is to plan to fail. And so this show is going to be about reflection, looking back at 2010 and looking ahead into 2011. And the question is, what has 2010 taught you? What have you learned from this year? And what will you do differently in the coming year? So take this as your really time of, you know, reflection. Take this time during, you know, during the holiday season, the bustles and the rush and the outings and everything. Let this 30 minutes show be your own quiet time with me to really reflect on your life. Reflect on the year because another year is about to bite the dust. Okay, never ever to be seen again. We can never recapture 2010 after the 31st of this month. And so going into 2011, you got to be saying, you know what? What am I going to do differently? How am I going to get closer to my dreams, you know? And on the broadcast with me today, I'm not going to be sharing this by myself. I am just so excited because I have a phenomenal woman, you know, a dynamic woman, an inspirational woman, a woman with her own life story too that is so inspirational and so motivational on the show with me today to help me to reflect on the year 2010 and look ahead into 2011. She is no stranger to the West Hartford community. She is no stranger to the Connecticut community. Many of us have heard of her. Um, she was, she's been very much in the news in recent time because she recently ran for Congress. And it is none other than Miss Janet Peckinpah. It's a pleasure, Janet, to have you on Thanks Inspired so Success. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming. You're welcome. It's, it's, it's wonderful to be here. Okay. I love talking to you. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to dive straight into our conversation because we really do not have much time, you know. And, um, you know, it's about looking back. We're mm -hmm. looking back at the year 2010 and we're looking ahead into mm -hmm. 2011. You know, many times we, we rush through life. Absolutely. We never pause. We never take time to really kind of reflect and number our days and, and uh, apply our hearts to some wisdom. And, I, I, and this is what this show is all about. I want to really help our viewers to pause and to learn and to grow. And um, you're going to help me today. Oh. So let's start <laughs> with personally. Okay. Personally. What has 2010 taught you personally? Well, personally, I've 
kind of did another recreation, which I find myself doing a lot in my life, Bola, and I did that in 2010. I recreated myself yet again mm. and, and took skill sets that I'd had in my life and applied them as I stepped forward to run as a regular citizen for Congress. Mm. I was unhappy with what I was seeing around me and, and felt um, unable to do anything. And I thought, no, Congress is about regular people coming forward and trying to make things good for all the American people. And so I thought, I'm as well qualified as anyone to do that. Mm. And my skill set as a journalist and a communicator I thought would help me a lot because all I've done for the last 30 years is learn about issues and learn in depth about issues that are important to all of us. And so I stepped forward as a regular citizen to run for Congress because I felt, and as you know, I was unsuccessful, but I felt that um, I wanted to represent, truly represent the people of my district. I live in the second district of Connecticut now. I live in Essex, Connecticut which is on the Connecticut River. And I felt that um, because of my learning, my teaching, and uh, my skills, that I could be a great, strong voice of for communications the for the people for of the, the second people. district. Absolutely. And so what I hear you saying really, truly, is that 2010, this year, has taught you to be courageous, mm. really. It's about courage because, you know, when I was looking um, and uh, reflecting and reviewing and preparing for this show, I said, you were successful because success is really staring fear in the face and stepping up to do it, That's regardless of, of whatever fears or you're, you're feeling. So the courage enough, the courage to do it, to even step up and step out, and to go for it, I think is, su is success right there. So to, tw that. 2010 has taught you courage. And, and, I, I, and I think that is something that I can identify with personally as well, you know, because this year I learned to be more assertive, to claim my voice, uh -huh. to speak up more in my personal relationships, in my relationships. You know, I found that um, over the years, uh, I always used to acquiesce mm -hmm. in my relationships, you know, and just being trying to be agreeable, mm -hmm. be respective of how I really felt on the inside of me. Mm -hmm. But this year, I finally claimed my voice. And what made you do that? Do you think, did you, in doing that, did you feel, in, did you find a new power? I think that it just gets to a point where you cannot help but do it. Mm -hmm. And which is probably how, what the same inspiration you felt. Yeah. Where you see a situation that is not quite right yeah. and you no longer want to accept the status quo. Okay. And you get to the point where you feel, I can do something about it. I ought to do something mm -hmm. about this. This shouldn't continue. I just think everybody has their, their, their turning point at their wit's end or the point where they feel that, you know, as a human being, they cannot take it anymore and I and I think that's probably what also happened for you you looked at that political scene you looked at the economy you looked at everything that was w happening to us yes. as a community and you thought you know what I know I have certain giftings and skills mm -hmm. and I'm not going to hold back on that anymore and I'm going to speak up and I'm going to stand up and I'm going to try yeah. and make a difference yeah. and I think that is just totally commendable so I mean that's a great thing that the year 2010 has taught us and you know going to your political aspirations and and running for office um, you know you you went for it this year I did. Um, why this year why do you think it had to be was it a question of this year or never I think it was. I'd never thought about it before. Mm. And I've been a small business person since I left my career in television of 30 years. And I've been, I've been trying to be a small business person in a state that is not that friendly to small businesses. Yes. It's very difficult to get ahead in our state, as we all know. And so I really felt it as that Main Street person who yes. said, you know, I, we, we've got to do something and stand up for those who are the job creators. And, and unless we um, make it easier for our small businesses to thrive, then we're, our unemployment is going to stay the way it is. Yes. So I had the opportunity to uh, work on a campaign with uh, my good friend Lisa Wilson Foley, who you know, yes. who ran for lieutenant governor. 
And it was during that process of going around with her all over the state and hearing her talk about, and, and I felt like it was a give back. Yes, absolutely. That it yes. was something that I could give back to the to people the of Connecticut community. that yes. I love yes. so much, who've been so good to me through the years and allowed me in their, in their homes each night to deliver the news to them. And they've always been so good to me, no matter what's happened in my life. And I felt like this was a way for me to give back to them. Absolutely, absolutely. And now looking back and, what will, and looking ahead, what will you do differently? What would you say? Have you had time to really reflect? And, um, you know, what would you do differently? Do you think that, you know, you would run your campaign differently? You know, what would be different? And I think I'd start a lot sooner. Okay. I think that if I do do this again, which I've been asked to, that you almost need to start now for two years from now. Yes. Because of in the federal race, you have to raise every dollar yourself. There's no matching. And unless you have your own wealth, yes. you, there's, you have to raise every penny. And campaigns are extremely expensive. Absolutely. As, as we've seen in the, in the 2010 yes, campaign. Yes. So many people spending so much money yes. on television ads. And, and if you don't have that kind of money, you have to raise it. And that's a very difficult thing to do. And you have to do it dollar to dollar to dollar. And that's one thing I also want viewers to learn. And what I see as a, as a professional coach and a business coach that many times my clients do is the fact that some, we don't start the process mm -hmm. early enough and oftentimes we don't also start with a concrete plan, mm -hmm. you know. And so that's one thing that um, you have learned yes. looking back that 2010 yes. has taught you. And that I, I hope that viewers can also learn in terms of preparing for 2011 or whatever goals or dreams you have. You have to start the process early and you have to be prepared and you need a plan to work it. And so looking ahead into 2011, um, are we saying that, um, you know, the political aspirations, the dreams, uh, have you put that in the back burner for now or... You're still going ahead. I, I think I'm, I'm there. I mean, yes. I was in a meeting last night to try yes. to uh, become part of a group that had been organized many, many years ago in eastern Connecticut. And it kind of had fallen away for the last six years. And we're trying to get that group up again. And it's a networking group. Yeah. It's a group of people, like-minded people, who have the same goals in mind yes. and can help in the second district, there's yes. 65 towns. I know, it's so large geographically, yes, it's, it's very large, yes. and it's it, it's very difficult to be able to reach out to people in all those places, and they're very you know very diverse. And so, if you have a network of people help you do that, it makes it a lot easier. So this group I was with last night, the reason we were together, we're meeting once a month, is to try to get that networking group back together again to help all people who may want to step forward as I did and exactly. run. Exactly. So that is something you're going to be doing differently. And I'm so glad you touched on networking because that's one of the gospel I preach. You must get out there and network and build those relationships because it's all about people. It is. You know, people are bridges. Dreams are not solitary. You can never achieve greatness by yourself. That's you know, so and true. so what you're planning to do in 2011 that's different is that you're trying to plug yourself into a network, a great network of like-minded people, mm -hmm. you know, who are going to inspire you, motivate you, and, you know, sharpen you mm -hmm. to help you to get to where you really like to go. And that is something different that some of my viewers we need to be doing in 2011. You really need to hook up and get connected mm -hmm. and get yourself in the midst of a, a, a solid support peer group of, of like-minded individuals it seems who are going easy, somewhere. But sometimes that's very difficult. That's always been very difficult for me because it's been very difficult for me to ask for help yes. from other people. And really, when you think about it, what are you doing when you're networking? You're taking your skills and you're asking someone else to help you maybe whatever, if it's your business, to get you new business, whatever yes. it is, or to fill in those gaps that you need. Yes. And for me, that's always been very difficult to do. I know, I know it's difficult for many people, especially for career professionals. Um, if you, I, I find that because career professionals 
have the safe Job, safety, net. safety net exactly they don't feel as compelled as entrepreneurs wow. sometimes to really get out there and network and market and it's usually harder for them when they transition uh -huh. you know to do it because um they're just not being used to doing mm -hmm. it but if you're an entrepreneur you're self-employed you don't have a choice that's right you have to you just have to <laughs> <laughs> otherwise there'll be no food on the table you know it's true um, but but even beyond that is that it's more than even asking it's about building relationships you know, when we look at networking from that perspective, about building relationships. That's nicer. You know, that's nicer. That feels and better. It feels better. Exactly. Exactly. And so that's one thing that you're going to be doing differently in 2011. Mm -hmm. And I hope viewers are also going to be doing differently in 2011. That that's one thing, important thing to really do is really make sure that you're really connected and you're really in the loop and you have a great network of people that surrounds you. And one of my shows that I'm actually going to be doing in the new year is on the connections power, you know, and um, I'm going to be doing some live workshops as well on that. I'm bringing in a colleague um, to talk about networking, who's an author, a recent author. So, you know, you have that to look forward to. And then lastly but not least, you know, we've talked about your business. You run a business. You're a business owner. And what has 2010 taught you about running and, and growing an, uh, a business and surviving yeah. in, in tough times? Well, again, Bilal, I think what I've found more than anything, and as, as you know, and I came from this great career after 30 years yes. and found myself starting my own business. Yes. And I think a lot of us are doing that who are unemployed. Yes. And we can't find work. And yes. people are thinking, what do we do? Well, we take our skill sets and we try to make a bit a small business. Yes. But again, I think the networking thing. I yes. think what I've learned is that you don't do it alone. And that's what I tried to do. Mm. That I was trying to do it all myself yes. instead of bringing other people in to help yes. me with certain parts of it. I, I call them accidental entrepreneurs. <laughs> You know, I like that. The economy has made us accidental entrepreneurs. But there's more to running a business than just, you know, the skill that you have or the talent you have for your job, you sure. know. There's so much more. There's so much more marketing and networking and, you know, behind the scenes. Doing the books. Accounting, mm -hmm. exactly, accounting. Yeah. And so much more that goes, goes into it. And one of the important things that I learned in, in, in 2010 is to be more strategic, to be more strategic in my business, you know. Um, you know, before, before 2010, for some reason, I would say I was living life by default. <laughs> mm -hmm. I wasn't purposeful. Um, I just felt somehow God would just bless me and make this thing happen and just it would just drop in my lap. The opportunity would just come and, you know, it would just happen, you know. But after so many years of waiting for it to happen and it wasn't happening and it didn't just drop into my lap or come from the sky, I discovered that I needed to take control. I needed to take control of my destiny. I needed to take control of my life and really map out a concrete plan with measurable steps and say, you know, this is where I want to go. These are my goals, and this is how I plan on reaching them. And, you know, I've, I was, I've been very fortunate this year, you know, that um, my business has done better this in year. This in this economy. That's amazing. In this economy than um, any other time. So you think it's more about you and I think how the more, planning. Exactly. I'm more of our mind and what's on the inside of us. And that's part of, going to also be part of my, my series in the new year, you know, that it's really more about us. And, you know, one of the funny things I say, it sounds funny, but um, it's so true when you think about it, is money hasn't left the planet. <laughs> money hasn't, money left, the hasn't planet. left the planet. But think about it, it's funny, sure. but has money left the planet? It hasn't. No. It's not like someone physically took, it took away. Mo away. Money never leaves. It only shifts. It only moves 
from plus to minus, from A to B, <laughs> money is always here with us. <laughs> so a lot of it has to do with our own mind. mind and our own thinking and our own, you know, fears and all of that. All of that affects how we relate to money and how we plan. Like you were talking about, you know, sometimes we have fears of even asking people for favors, leveraging our networks right. and all of that. So there's, it's, it's a lot more about us than it is about the money or the economy or what's out there. And so that's what I found. That's what I discovered in 2010. And I, I became more strategic. And that's what 2010 taught me, to be more strategic, more intentional, take more control. Mm -hmm. And I, I found doing, doing that, uh, I was more successful. And um, what I'll do differently in 2010, nothing. I wouldn't change anything in terms of you know, what I've learned, the lessons I've learned from, from this year is that I will continue to be more strategic. I'll be continue to be more assertive. And I'm also posing that to viewers as a challenge, you know, and that's going to be a series I'm going to be doing in the new year. I call it Building the Bridges, Power Bridges to Your Destiny, you know. And like so we'll that. be building those power bridges, the money bridge, the people bridge, the creativity bridge, all those bridges that we need to take us from where we are to where we'd really like to be. And so that's the challenge to, to you, my viewers, today. I know Christmas is there, and I know for some of you, you know, all of this um, deep stuff, conversation <laughs> is, not, is not really on your mind. But I really will ask that you take that time, just this 30 minutes, after you've watched this show, to really um, get your journal out there and really begin to ask yourself that question. What has 2010 taught me? You know, it could be negative, it could be positive, you know, and just kind of itemize those things, things. at least five things, you know, at least five things that you think I've learned from this year. And then, you know, you look at that and say, what am I planning to do differently in 2011? Because you know what they say, they say only a fool does the same thing <laughs> over and over again and expects different results, right? right. And we're no fools, okay? <laughs> so if we want different results, if we want change in our lives, we want newness, we want growth, there's some things we just have to do a, 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 a differently, yeah. you know? So you have to then take that journal again after you've looked at it and say, wow, differently, I would, I would never work more in 2010. I'll be more intentional you know, I'll take more control of my destiny. You know, I will, I would learn more. I will listen to more inspirational books more. Whatever it is that you need to do in 2010, you need to do and invest in your own life and your own self, you know, and your own goals and, and, and really um, see yourself going from A to Z in 2011. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we're talking about, you know, your aspirations mm -hmm. and, and, and your goals and how you were able at one time in your life to be able to take um, oh, yeah. a really bad situation yeah. and turn, turn it, it around. around. And, I, and I find we all have those times in our lives, all of us. I don't care how successful we are, you know, whatever. We, we all have those times in our life when life throws us on the ground yes. and we have a choice. We can either pick ourselves back up again or we can stay on the ground. It, and what I've always found, which has been so helpful for me, is that in any situation, and I've, I've said you can, like a table, if you go around to a different side of the table and you look at the same thing from a different view, you see something completely different. Exactly. And, uh, and sometimes it gives you a different way. Mm. And when you look at something differently, all of a sudden it goes, aha. Exactly. That's how I can get through that door. Exactly. And you didn't see it before, but if you turn, so I always do that in anything. And it, it's a simple visual. Yes. And if you just view something a little differently, it'll give mm. you a different perspective. Mm. Exactly. And, 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 and you, like you said, it, it, it's all a perspective. It's all perspective. Perspective. Because you could be looking at a glass and you could be saying it's half empty. Mm -hmm. And someone else could look at it and say it's half full. And who's it's doing perspective. better? Exactly. The one who sees it are full. Right. Definitely. And so you, you were able to do that. Mm -hmm. And that means that, and many, many of us are doing that. We're reinventing our lives. We're turning around, um, you know. And we will many, in, many times probably throughout our lives. Exactly. And, and that is hope for us as a culture in, a, in a, this yes. current economic. We're resilient people. 
And um, what we just need is to step away mm -hmm. for a second, you know, step away for a second. And that's why I'm asking, you know, during this month, you know, this festive month, step away for a second, you know, from yourself and the situation and really reflect mm -hmm. and really look at it, like you said, from another perspective. And you'll be amazed how you can start seeing your life in a different way right. and how you can come up you know, with some creative ways and plans and ideas about. to move it really in the direction um, that you'd like to see it. And we all have that capacity we within do. us. We have that you know, power. We have that power within us to do just that. Mm -hmm. And that is really what I'm really truly hoping that um, you would do and I would do and, you know, Janet would do and all of us would do because I think eventually we would really bounce back, mm -hmm. you oh, know, as, as, a, as a nation. From, from these times, and we'll be better for it. We'll be stronger mm -hmm. as, a, as a result. And so, you know, basically, that's all we have for you. I tell you that 30 minutes, it, it goes, by. it goes, it goes so fast. It just flies by like that. And, uh, you know, I want to use this opportunity to just wish you a very mm -hmm. Merry Christmas. Um, you know, it is the season to give, so share and give and love. And don't forget, I always say it's Christmas, Christ. Mass. So Jesus is the reason for the season. Don't forget to celebrate him also. Uh, this is Princess Bola, the total success coach. You know, I'm reminding you to keep learning, to keep smiling. Put a smile on your face. Hey, life's too short, right? Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> keep believing. You know, keep on keeping on. I want to say thank you so much to you, Janet, oh, for being on the show. You, you really helped to inspire our viewers today. Thank and you. and been so blessed having you on the show. Thank you. And I wish you great success in the future. And don't forget, I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Twitter. <laughs> Search Princess Bola Adelani. And let's keep the conversation going. I'll see you in 2011. And enjoy your Christmas holiday. God bless. Bye-bye.